From the archives of the greatest dramas in radio history, we proudly present Hollywood. The Radio Theater brings you Joan Caulfield, William Holden, and Billy DeWolf in Miss Susie Slagle. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Our play tonight is essentially a story about young people, medical students to be exact, their sweethearts and their classmates. So in producing the screenplay, Paramount used an exceptional array of youthful talent, and we've done the same. Start in our cast, for instance, is one of Hollywood's happiest discoveries, Joan Caulfield, playing the same role she played in the picture. Also, William Holden, who soared to immediate stardom with his first appearance on the screen, and Billy DeWolf, playing his original screen role. Our story opens at Miss Susie Slagle's boarding house, a home away from home for generations of prospective men and white. We take you there now with the first act of tonight's play, starring Joan Caulfield as Gret, William Holden as Pug, and Billy DeWolf as Ben. Our curtain rises on Miss Susie Slagle's. <laughs> After her parents died, people thought Miss Susie would be lonely in the big house on Laurel Street. But that was the year the medical school opened, and students were searching for places to live. By 1910, the house on Laurel Street was known to two generations of doctors as Miss Susie Slagle. Is, uh, is this Miss Susie Slagle's boarding house? It sure is. Step right in, doctor. Doctor, I hope you can say that four years from now. Oh, I will. See those pictures on the wall? I call all of them doctor when they came here and when they left, too. Huh. Well, maybe they were younger than I when they started. Well, that don't mean nothing. In the end, they was all doctors and good ones, too. Now, if you come upstairs, doctor, I'll show you your room. You're a wonderful room. Say, that's it, huh? Those buildings out there? Yes, sir. That's the medical school. You've been wanting to come here for a long time, haven't you? Oh, that's taken me seven years. Four years of pre-med and three years trying to get the money to come here. Oh, uh, dinner bell in ten minutes. First night, Miss Susie likes to have all the boys down on time. Oh, I'd better get washed up then. Oh, uh, where's the bathroom? End of the hall. <laughs> <laughs> Hear him laughing there? That's Mr. Ben. He's a third-year man. He's in there with the new boys now. Come along, I'll show you. Well, come in, young man. Come in. Oh, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. I, I didn't know you were taking a bath. As I was saying, gentlemen, you'll soon discover that four years in a penitentiary is a picnic compared with four years in medical school. Even in the bathroom, you can't relax. Look about you. Every wall covered with anatomical drawings the artistic efforts of your predecessors. I turn my head to the left and contemplate the complexities of the spinal column. On my right, a highly accurate reproduction of the human heart. Now, while you brush your teeth, you memorize the bones of the wrist. While yeah, you... Well, what about the girls in this town, Ben? Ah, Mr. Abernathy, a most interesting and vital subject. Let me introduce you to your new love, little Elise, the sweetheart of the school. Well, look, up there, on the ceiling. Now, there is really a work of art, a life-size drawing in resplendent color of the woman of your dreams. You would study medicine. <laughs> From now on, when you look at a woman, that's what you'll see. No more rosy lips and sparkling eyes. From now on, every woman will be little Elise. A heart, a kidney, a spleen, blood vessels, tibias, fibulas, Oh, it's awful. <laughs> well, what are you laughing at? Well, if medicine's so tough, what are you doing here? Jumping sunfish. You don't think I'd be anything but a doctor, do you? Now, hand me my towel, one of you. We're going to be late for dinner. And this is 
is the dining room, gentlemen. Miss Susie will be in in just a moment. Now, uh, what was I saying? Uh, cadavers. Ah, yes. Cadavers, cadavers, cadavers. Four hours a day, you'll cut them up. Six days a week for six months with Mets glaring over your shoulders. Who's Mets? Professor of anatomy and a killer. Oh, Heiser. Still seeing spots in front of your eyes, Heiser? I'd better have a look. Never mind my spots, Mr. Ben. Open your mouth, Heiser. Say, ah. Ain't no third-year man gonna look in my mouth. <laughs> well, hush up now. Here she come. Good evening, gentlemen. Miss Susie, these fellows claim they all belong. Shall I call the roll? No, thank you, Ben. You know how I like to guess. Now, let me look at you. I look forward to having you here, Silas. Well, that's right, ma'am, and thank you. You do look like your father, don't you? And you, you're Clayton Abernathy. Yes, ma'am. Now, which is a boy from China? Oh, it's you. You're Albert Riggs. Yes, ma'am. And you're Irving Aaron. That's right. Oh, that was a nice letter your mother wrote me, Irving. That leaves the last of you, the boy from Vermont. You're St. George Prentice. St. Whit? <laughs> well, uh, fortunately, Miss Lego, most everybody calls me Pug. Oh, Pug. Yes, yes, Miss Susie? Thank you, Ben. Seems like old times having you in the house again. You mean my merry laughter ringing through the halls, Miss Susie? <laughs> no, dear. I mean there was no hot water. <laughs> and now, I'd like to say it's a very great pleasure to have you all here. There's only one thing I ask, that you do not fail. None of my boys has ever failed. Ready, Heiser? Yes, ma'am. Your best sherry wine, Miss Susie. Pass the glasses, then. And please join us, Heiser. Yes, miss. My dear boys, to your future. This is Silas Holmes. Now you've met them all. Oh, not Gilbert Holmes, son. <laughs> That's right, Otto. Why I've darkened Otto's door with you adolescence, I don't know. But you have completed three months of study, and I promised you a little reward. Between these refined walls, you'll discover the best beer in Baltimore. Right, Otto? Oh, of course I ain't. Well, fill them up. I don't know, Mr. Ben, if I am happy to meet these friends of yours or not. Look at their faces. They're like Undertale. They're suffering from Metz disease. Metz disease? Professor Metz? Oh, he is a very brilliant man. He certainly is. The trouble is, we aren't. Did I hear someone mention Professor Met? Lige. Lige, come here. You fellas all know Lige Howe. Oh, 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 you've got that introduction wrong, my friend. Not Lige Howe. Elijah Howe, Jr., son of the physician in chief, son of the professor of medicine at this institute of learning. Where's that bottle, Otto? And what's the matter with you outside of being a little drunk? Well, I resent being a famous man's son. That's what's the matter with me. Metz put me on probation today. He won't stand for sloppy work from Dr. Howe's son, he said. That's all I hear, Dr. Howe's son. Oh, you boys. When will you learn that life is for enjoying? What good it does to know everything if you have no pleasure in life? That's the way it is, Otto. No work, no MD. Oh, but not all the time work. Your father, Silas, he too stood in this cafe many times. He found time to enjoy himself. Today, I bet you he is a fine doctor. He was a fine doctor. Oh. He died last April. Bad heart. Hadn't had a vacation in 12 years. Oh. Well, if you permit, we will drink to him. Pause it. Pause it. Hey, Pug, you've been asking me to point out Dr. Faber to you. Well, there he is. Dr. Which one? Dr. Faber. With the cigar, he's sitting with Metz. Oh, so Dr. Metz is here, is he? Yes, sir, that's Faber. Best surgeon in the country. If he left the stool, he could make a quarter of a million. Flies, where are you going? I'm going to have a little talk with the eminent Dr. Metz. I've had just about enough to drink. Flies, don't be a sap. Get him out, please. Before I'll he's kill that little mouse face. Please. You're just coming with me. Just as soon as I've told him off. Professor Metz. Good afternoon. Professor Metz. Well, we were just leaving, Professor Metz. I got one thing to oh, say to oh, you, Professor Metz. Professor Metz. Oh, oh, I've been wanting to say, you guys. Oh, no. Let go of me. What kind of nonsense oh, is this? Oh, Goodbye, Professor Metz. Goodbye. Let go of me. Let go of me. Let go of me. Hello. Oh. Oh, hello. Who are you? And what's the matter with my brother? Oh, oh nothing to worry about. A slight overdose of uh, C2H5OH. Lige, wake up. He's south. Uh, C2H5OH. Well, well, how can we unsouth him? Well, uh, he'll sleep it off. He'll be fine in the morning, won't you, Lige? Lige. Uh... But, but he was going to help me with my geometry tonight. 
Now you have got me in a pickle. I have. Well, if he hadn't been out with you... Well, I, I wasn't the only one with him. It's very clear you felt responsible or you wouldn't have brought him home. Now, look. And when I'm disgraced in the morning for not having my geometry problems, it'll be largely your fault, won't it? I'll probably flunk. Well, I... I wish I could help you, You but... will? You're sure you don't mind? Oh, that'll be simply immense. Immense? Well, well, don't stand there. Hurry. Uh, get Lige up to his room before Papa comes home, and I'll get my piano. And therefore, angle R equals angle S. Now, AD is perpendicular to PR. Do you know why? Uh-uh. Because a line perpendicular to one of two parallel lines is perpendicular to the other. Right here, see? Yes, I see. But what do you do in Vermont in the winter? I, uh, get ready for the summer. Now then. Oh, it must be fun on a farm. Oh, yeah, great. All you have time for is to eat and sleep. But I love to eat and sleep. Now look. AP equals PR. Now, therefore, AP equals AR. QED. Well, that's your last problem. Do you understand them, Miss Howe? No, I'm too dense. I just ask people to explain them because then they end up by doing them for me. Can you two-step... Certainly I can two-step. Let me see you. Now? I bet you can't two-step like I can. Look, look, I'll show you. <laughs> oh, oh, Father, this is a friend of Lies. He's helping me with my geometry. So I see. Well, I, I think I'd better be going. Homework of my own, you know. Uh, good night, Dr. Howe. I'll show you to the door. First year student, don't you? Yes, sir. He lives at Miss Susie's, Father. You're a fortunate young man. I have an old friend in that house. Is she still in good shape? Uh, little Elise? I did a liver. Huh. Nice liver, sir. Thank you. I was working on that the week I met Margareta's mother. And the first lace cap that Greta ever wore was made by Miss Susie. Well, good night, sir. Good night, Mr. Prentice. Uh, good night, Miss Howell. Give my regards to Miss Susie. I will, sir. Father. Hmm? Father, isn't he immense? Yes, the very first little lace cap you ever wore. That wasn't so long ago at that, was it? Oh, you. Hey, you fellas, I just saw the bulletin board. Come on if you don't want to miss it. Labor's going to operate. Jumping catfish, a cholecystectomy, too. You mean we can watch? Yes, I just got permission. Well, what's a cholecystectomy? Uh, cholecyst, uh, what did you say it was? Gallbladder, stupid. Bad case. Come on, you favor. Oh, 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 oh. For the benefit of you students in the gallery, I am now exposing the cystic artery. Here, the operator must exercise great care. Should the hepatic artery be mistaken for the cystic, it might be fatal. We are now prepared to remove the gallbladder entirely. Return 95, doctor. Pulse 150. I vote him a place. Bunker. See what I mean, Beck? The patient's in shock. She's she's going to die? Could be. Oh, how can he stay so calm? Doesn't he know that the breathing's getting more shallow? Tide. Clamp. Pressure's down to 80. Faber's worried. Tide. Look at him. Look how fast he's working now. Ligature. He's got to get out in a hurry. He's got to get out. Bunker. Clamp. She hasn't got a chance. She... Pug, where are you going? I, I'm getting out of here. Scissors. Pug! What happened, St. George? What's wrong? I just left an operation, Miss Susie. I ran out. Is that all? It takes some people months to get used to surgery. The woman was dying and I ran out. Oh, I'll never get over it, Miss Susie. Over what? Well... When I was a kid back home, Doc Carson used to take me out on his round. One day we visited a farmer way on the outs outside of town. Heart trouble. Doc had to go back to town for a prescription. He left me alone with the man. And he was dying. Gasping for air. He needed help to live. Just a little help. And I couldn't give it to him. I had to stand there, helpless, watching him die. And then all of a sudden, I couldn't stand it anymore. I ran away from him, same as I ran out of the operating room this afternoon. We all get frightened, St. George. But I've never been afraid of anything in my life, Miss Susie. It's just that I couldn't bear to see that woman die. Supposing I'd been the surgeon instead of Faber, and I felt that way. You suppose that Dr. Faber has never felt that kind of fear? 
I tell you, Faber's the finest man in the world. Gee, I wish I'd have been there. The gosh darnest job I ever saw. Before I left, the nurse was saying that woman would be going home in three weeks. What a man. Then she didn't die. He doesn't seem so. Faber saved her. Oh, I should have known. He's so doggone sure of himself. He wasn't helpless, was he? He really knew, didn't he? Yes. He really knew. And someday so will you. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Wingate telephoned. Mrs. Wingate? The dean's wife? Don't be alarmed. Just to leave word for all you boys, there'll be a dance at their home on Christmas Eve. Holy smoke. It's almost Christmas, isn't it? Oh, thanks, Miss Susie. Thanks. <laughs> Grip. Get out of the car. This is the Wingates. Father, Father, do I look exactly right? Oh, of course you do. Why? Oh, this is my first real party, and, and Mother thinks I'm still a baby. Well? Oh, she choked up the front of my dress with tulle because she said it was too low for a young girl to wear, and, and I think it looks tacky. Looks fine to me. Well, that's because I took the tulle off. Oh. Well, do you think it's all right? On one condition. Be sure to sew it back on before your mother sees it. Can we go in now? Father, would you answer an important question? I'll try. Suppose a man wants to kiss me. Should I let him? Well, not unless you want him to, Grit. But if you want to, you bet you kiss him. You see, kisses are to love like thermometers are to fever. You can't tell how bad you've got it without them. You're really wonderful, Papa. Well, thanks, Grit. Uh, I, I guess we can go in now. Good. Oh, uh, Gret, about kisses. Yes? Like thermometers, if you use them too much, they tend to become inaccurate. I'll remember, Pa. Thanks. I thought you were talking to me. I beg your pardon. I am talking to you. You are? I, I was just fixing my hair. Why aren't you in there dancing? Well, you you see, I just got... This is the first time I've had my hair up. Oh, maybe that's why you look the way you do. How do I look? You look, uh... Well, you, you look like a field does it. First thing in the morning when the sun just hits it. Oh, all wet and cold? Oh, no, no, I, I didn't mean that at all. I meant... I... Oh, have you a dance program? Why, no, uh... Do I need one? Oh, yes, of course. Here. Oh. Well, there's someone's initials on this. M.H. Who's M.H.? Me. Well, who are you? Oh, fine. I know you. Think hard. My brother's a friend of yours, and I'm dumb at geometry, but very good at the two-step. Oh. Well, it's about time. Well, you've certainly grown up, but you sure act just the same. You don't mind, do you? Oh, no, no, not at all. I... I think it's simply immense, Miss Howe. You're worried about my character, aren't you, Mr. Prentice? Do you really think I'm forward? Well, I... You shouldn't worry. My character will improve with age. Everyone says I'm just like my mother, and you ought to see how dignified she is. She's a perfect doctor's wife. Is that what you want to be? That's what I'm going to be. <laughs> well, what's so funny about that? You decided to be a doctor, didn't you? Well, I decided to marry one. And when you decide to do something, I guess there's no stopping you, is there? I sure feel sorry for the man you decide to hook. Oh, I expect you'll wriggle a little, but it won't do you any good. Me? Mm-hmm. Oh, now, let's concentrate on the dance, huh? Oh, let's not dance. Let's sit this one out. Now, listen, lady. I'm just a poor medical student. Oh, I don't care. That's the way all doctors begin. I'm young. I'll wait. You guys? Get with you? No, I... I left the party sort of early, Dad. So did I. And I've been waiting up to see you, Lange, about your studies. Oh, Yes, it seems I disgraced you properly this time. I want to find out why your marks are so low and how can you can improve them. Forget about me. Well, how can I forget about you? You're a physician-in-chief, professor of medicine. What's that got to do with your record? Everything. 
They all think of me as your son. Nobody lets me be myself. You knew all about that when you decided to take medicine. I didn't decide to take medicine. You decided that for now, me. Now, wait a minute, Lies. You even gave me your name. You're soft and lazy and spoiled. And if I'm at fault, it's for letting you get that way. You think it's a cinch being the son of a famous man? Nothing's a cinch, and you better learn that now. If you've decided you don't like medicine, get out of it. And if you feel that living under my shadow is too great a handicap, get out of that, too. All right, Dad, I will. Well, looks like we're home, Pug. Uh-huh. Uh, thanks for all the dances. Oh, thanks for letting me walk you home. I, uh, I'd like to ask you in, but it's awfully late. Yeah. Well, good night, Greg. Good night, Pug. Pug, uh, we're under the porch light. We are? Oh, does that mean something? Well, it's supposed to when mistletoe is tied to it. Oh, I'm not very bright, am I? Uh, I'm waiting, Pug. Thanks, Brett. Thank you, Pug. You know something? Father was right. Father can go to the devil. Large. Why on earth? And, and with a suitcase. I'm leaving his happy home. Oh, hello, Pug. You've had a row with Father. Oh, beauty. Even you can't fix it. Well, where are you going? I don't know. Only that I'm not going back inside this house. Well, why don't you go to Miss Susie's with Pug? That would be all right, wouldn't it? I, I guess so. Well, sure. Well, just for the night, if you, if you don't think Miss Susie would mind. You know perfectly well she'd do anything in the world for... For Elijah Howe's son. For a friend of mine. Come on, Elijah. Thanks, Pug. Good night, Gret. Don't make any noise, Lige. The stairs are over here. Okay. I'll take your bag and... Thank you. Yes, ma'am. You'll find towels for your guests in a linen closet. Oh. Yes, ma'am. But how did she know I was... Don't ask me. I guess Miss Susie knows everything. Merry Christmas, Lige. Yeah. Merry Christmas, Pop. Stars Joan Caulfield, William Holden, and Billy DeWolf will return with Act Two of Miss Susie Slagle's in a moment. Of all the libraries in the United States, it is interesting that the greatest one was provided originally for the use of congressmen. Until just before the turn of the century, the library was in the Capitol building. But the continuous addition of new volumes required new and larger quarters. So in 1897, the first separate permanent home for the Library of Congress was completed. By law, all books copyrighted in the United States must be sent to the library. So by 1939, $8 million more was spent for an annex. Today, with 55 million items, including 14 million books, more than 18 million manuscripts, and huge files of maps, prints, photographs, and reels of microfilm, the Library of Congress must grow again. By the early 1970s, a new edition will provide for the old and the 17,000 new items received each week. What started decades ago as a simple reference room for Congress has grown into the largest library in the world. Here's your producer, William Keeley. We continue with Act Two of Miss Susie Slagle, starring Joan Caulfield as Gret, William Holden as Pug, and Billy DeWolf as Ben. For the boys at Miss Susie Slagle's, the months have flown by. Now, on the eve of second year examinations, the lamps burn far into the night in the house on Laurel Street. And the lamp that burns longest is in the room of Elijah Howe, Jr. It's no use, fellas. I'm too far behind. The funny part is I'd really like to make the grade. Now that you've made your little speech, we'll continue. As I said before, Dr. Bowen should ask you something about diseases of the liver. Well, there's hypertrophic biliary cirrhosis. And what else? Pick's disease. That's not exactly cirrhosis. What else? Well, there's, there's, uh... What about hemochromatosis? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Well, what are the microscopic appearances of the liver in this disease? I don't remember. You do remember. Well, there's fibrosis and, uh... And the pigment is found in the portal spaces. Also in the parenchymal cells. You remember? Oh, stop telling me I remember because I don't. I'll go on, get to bed. We'll get to bed after you've learned about livers. Now, get this. 
Microscopically, the pigment is deposited first in the sinusoidal endothelium. Sinusoidal endothelium. Then in the lining epithelium of the small bile duct. Understand? Lining epithelium of the small bile duct. It's after two o'clock. You've got to get some sleep. I've got an exam in the morning, Miss Susie. But you don't know now, my dear. You're not going to learn by morning. Lige, have you seen your father lately? No, Miss Susie. I'm sorry, because your father really... I'd rather not talk about the great Dr. Howe, Miss Susie. All right. But I want you to promise me something. Heise is making you a hot milk punch. I want you to drink it and go straight to bed. Will you? But I... Yes, ma'am. Thank you. There's one thing you're not counting on that's going to help you tomorrow. What's that, Miss Susie? You're one of my boys now. And none of my boys has ever failed. Good night, Lars. Hey, Ben! Ben, did you hear the news I passed? We all made it. Ah, yeah, really? uh, yes. Second-year exams. I remember they seemed mighty important to me at the oh, time. Oh, Well, uh, what's the matter with you? Uh, oh, nothing. I just got my appointment, fellas, that's all. Oh, Why, that's oh, oh, what hospital, Ben? Right here. Oh, Benny, that's good. Not everyone gets appointed here. One in 20, the dean said. Ah, uh, great scholar, the dean. Otto, set him up while I call my girl. Oh, uh, who's got six bits? What, again? Do we have to pay every time you call your girl? Oh, let's not quibble. Well, fellas, it costs money to telephone long distance. Now, please, I'd like six bits. Oh, okay, I got two bits. Well, that's better. As soon as we're married, you fellas can drop around on Saturday nights and drink a little beer with us. <laughs> Maybe we'll even let you play with the kids. Oh, what a girl. <laughs> Waiting for me faithfully all these years. Well, I'll be right back, fellas. Hey, guys, what do you say we sell an eight-bench girl? Okay. Hey, hey, look, if he's trying to talk to her on the phone... Oh, that's a little background music. Come on, Bert, get at the piano. I need to know. Here he comes. Well, how'd she like the song, Ben? I didn't speak to her. Well, then where's our six bets? I talked to her mother. She got married last week. Oh. To a guy with a job in the bank. A very good friend of mine, Pinky Busterson. Oh, gosh, Ben, I... Wednesday afternoon, three o'clock. Church wedding. I guess it takes too long to become a doctor. Too long to expect a girl to wait for... For the guy who works in a bank. Otto, give me a drink. You don't have to apologize, Ben. I'd come home drunk, too, if I were you. Imagine my pinky position. I used to play mumble peg with him. Feed him every time. Every single time. I'm sure you did, dear. How does his cold cloth feel? Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Know what, Miss Susie? What? Pinky hasn't got a hair on his head. <laughs> Bald as a billiard ball. And I'm going to be the gosh darndest best orthopedist she ever saw. You bet you are, Ben. You just bet you are. <laughs> Gentlemen, as third-year students, you'll start work in the clinic today. There, you will have your first opportunity at diagnosis. Just remember that without diagnosis, the rest of medicine is... Well, nurse, what is it? A message from Mr. Prentice, doctor. He's wanted immediately in the dean's office. The dean? Hmm. Run along, Prentice. Come to the clinic as soon as you're through. Oh, excuse me, but the nurse said that... It... Why, Greg? Hello. Where's your father? Do you like my new suit? Yeah, yeah, I like it fine. Where's your father? I don't know. But he sent for me. Oh, uh, I did. You mean to tell me 
just to show me a dress or something? It's not a dress. It's a suit. Look, I'm in class. The clinic, way on the other side of town. Don't yell at me. But you ought to know better than that. I do know better. If you'd come around and see me once in a while, I, I wouldn't have to take such desperate measures. Oh, Greta, I, I've been awfully busy. I haven't seen you in two months. If you think I'm silly or boring, just say so. I don't think you're silly. I, I think... Well... You know what I think of you. Uh, but can't you see, Gret? I'm just a farmer with fancy ambitions to become a doctor and with no reason to think I'll make good at it. And it just so happens that you're Dr. Howell's daughter. What difference does that make? What difference? What difference? Oh, hello, Prentice. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Dr. Howell. i, I got to get back to the clinic. Uh, goodbye, Gret. Every time I see that young man, he acts as if he just robbed a bank. Is he sweet on you? No, he isn't. A and I'm just beginning to sympathize with Lige. I'm very sorry, Papa, but it's a lot of trouble having you for a father. Oh, nurse, uh, where did Dr. Bowen go? Oh, I couldn't say, Mr. Prentice. Oh, uh, your friend said they'd see you at lunch. Oh, oh, thanks. Say, what's this little boy doing here? Well, I can't convince him that the clinic's closed. Really, Sonny, it's no use waiting. <laughs> What's the matter, kid? Got a bellyache? It ain't me, mister. It's my dog. Oh, what's the matter with your dog? Well, those automobiles ran over him. Well, the thing to do is to take him to a veterinary. Well, I did, but he says he hurt so bad he wouldn't even try to fix him. So you came over here? Yeah, now the nurse won't do it either, and he's gonna die. Look, I'll tell you what. You go and get your dog as fast as you can. Now, right in back of this building is a sign that says Experimental Laboratory. I'll be there. Can you remember that Experimental Laboratory? Now, go on, run. I'll be right back, mister. Thanks. Say, nurse, call Miss Susie's, will you, and tell Lige how to get over here at the X lab? Oh, could, could Bert come, too? Bert? Oh, you know him, huh? Sort of. Yeah, Bert, too, by all means. Oh, thanks. Oh, what if Dr. Faber needs the laboratory? Oh, he won't be needing it. He's lecturing. Hurry now, hurry. <laughs> in here, young man? I'm waiting for my dog. Oh, do you work here, too? Oh, now and then. My name is Dr. Faber. What's your... Dog? You said dog? He was run over. They're fixing him inside there. I see. Only they don't want me to go in. Oh, you better not go in either. Oh, I'll be quiet. You keep waiting out here. There's a tear in the spleen. Yeah. I'll have to remove it. Agreed? I think I you agree. better. I He'd have a better chance if we gave him saline. Right away, too. Sponge. Ligature. Tie. Lige. Saline started. It'll last much longer, Pug. Forceps, Bert. Sponge. Come on, come on. Well, what are you waiting uh... for? Sponge. Okay. Now the scissors. The pedicle seems okay. No other blood vessels need tying. All right, let's get out in a hurry. Suit you, Lige. I said suit. Pug, look. Dr. Faber. You've got very little time. I suggest you don't waste it on me. Yes, sir. Suit you, Lige. Suit you. Well, young man, your friends and the little boy have taken the dog to the basement. He'll recover. I've cleaned up everything, Dr. Faber. Well, if you're waiting for me to make excuses for using your laboratory, I haven't any. Prentice, did I understand you correctly before? You do not want to become a surgeon? No, sir, I... Uh... You aspire to the prescription of pills, cough medicines, and powdered frog legs, is that it? Uh, no, sir, I, I want to be a surgeon, all right, but... You just said that you didn't. I meant, if I can. Well, what's to stop you? Not that old nonsense about hands. Oh, my hands are sort of big, sir. Big and blunt, eh? <laughs> That's a legend perpetuated by surgeons with long, thin fingers. That dog just now... I suppose you think it was smart to move so fast in an operation of that kind. No, sir. Well, it was. That saline transfusion was good, too. But you have a great deal to learn, Prentice. Watch all the operations you can. Critically, not passively. End of next year, if you still want to be a surgeon, drop around and see me. I certainly will, Dr. Faber. Thank you. Dogs in my laboratory. Dogs. <laughs> Can't you bicycle any faster than this? Huh? Oh, oh, sure, sure. Dog's gonna be fine, Gret. 
A successful splenectomy in 11 minutes. That's wonderful, Pug. Watch the puzzles. I remember one summer I, I won a cucumber co- picking contest. I have big hands, see? But these same hands were removed the spleen in 11 minutes. Hmm? Come to think of it, Kelly has blunt fingers, and he's one of the finest surgeons in the world. Pug, it's raining. It's raining hard. Not that I'm comparing myself to Kelly, but after all... I, I said it's raining. And Faber isn't the type to hand out compliments right and left either. No, it's pouring. As a matter of fact, I'm told... Pug! Huh? What's the matter? You great big baboon. You don't come near me for months, and then when you do, all you talk about is your darn old surgery. But, Gret... And then you keep me out riding a bicycle in the pouring rain, and until my hair's all sagging down, and I'll probably catch my death of cold. Well, goodbye, Mr. Prentice. Gret, wait a minute. I don't want to talk to you. Oh, please don't be angry, Gret. How'd I know it was going to rain? I'm going home. Well, you, you can't go home in this storm. Gret, watch out. The road's slippery. Gret, that puddle... Oh! Oh, gee, Gret. You're mud all over. Well, oh, at least you're becoming a little more observing. As for getting mad at me for all that medical talk, well, well you're going to have to listen to a lot of operations when you're married to a surgeon. Oh, I am, Em. What did you say? Well, you told me so yourself. Once you decide to do something, there's, there's no stopping you. You said I'd wriggle some, but it wouldn't do any good. I never said anything of the kind. Hey, uh, there's some mud on your face. Uh, get a handkerchief. Hold your face up. Like this? Yeah. yeah. That's better. Forehead, too. Got all the mud off? Uh-huh. Pug, I'm, I'm still holding my face up. Oh. Oh, yeah. Here, blow. Harder? Oh, you. Now what? Please, Mr. Prentice. Give me a kiss. Oh. Oh, sure, Greg. I certainly will. three of Miss Susie Slagle, starring Joan Caulfield, William Holden, and Billy DeWolf in a moment. We return you now to William Keeley. Act three of Miss Susie Slagle, starring Joan Caulfield as Gret, William Holden as Pug, and Billy DeWolf as Ben. It's the first day of Easter vacation at the medical school. That means open house at Miss Susie Slagle's. Not only for the students, but for all Miss Susie's boys. Oh, Lash. Oh, hello, Dean Winkett. Hey, isn't your father coming? I really don't know, sir. Uh, very obstinate man, Lash. And I think you take after him. Yes, sir. Hi, sir. Where are you? I'm dry as a chip. Coming, sir. Coming. You take it easy now. You're getting too old to drink some Where's Miss Susie, Isa? She's upstairs, Mr. Burke. Riggs? Uh, Bert Riggs? Well, he wasn't feeling too good. She wanted to visit with him a while. Hey, don't move, oh, Isaac. Oh, hello, man. If you babies think you work hard, well, you try being resident physician. <laughs> Thanks, Isaac. Oh, uh, how are your spots? Never mind my spots, Mr. Bin. Just because you're wearing that little white suit don't make you a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac, you'll join us, won't you? Thank you, sir. Got my silver cup already. Still the same cup? Yes, sir. The one you give me in 1894. And still taking it straight, I notice. Three fingers even, sir. How can you tell, Heiser? Silver cup isn't transparent. I can't see, Mr. Pug, but I judge is fine. Hmm, and sometimes you misjudge it. Yes, sir, but when I misjudge it, nobody dies from it. <laughs> well, boys, a happy Easter. Uh, happy, happy Easter. 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 And a solemn tribute to the little lady on the third floor. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Oh, sir. <laughs> Yes, Somebody's Little waiting to see you in the car, Miss Lyle. Okay. I'll go right in. A prettier thyroid you never will find. If you don't like Hello, Lyle. Dad. Your mother always said that my patients came off better than my family. Lyle, we miss you. 
Oh, I'm glad to see you, Dad. Very glad. Except I, I'm not coming home to live in case you come here. Why not? Well, at home, I'm your son. Here, I'm on my own. Lange, I noticed you didn't apply for an internship. I'm planning to go into pathology, Dad. Pathology? Oh, now listen, Lige. I always figured I you... know you did. But I like pathology. Sorry, boy. Of course. Someday I'll learn that you've a mind of your own and a life of your own. I should have realized that years ago. We can be friends again, can't we? Dad, of course. You know, we should have sent you to Miss Susie's in the first place. Well, let's join the others. Good afternoon. Uh, did the singing bring you down, Miss Susie? I'm glad you're here, Dr. Howe. I'm afraid Bert... I'm afraid he's quite ill. Doctor, could could you go up and see him? Of course, Miss Susie, right away. Oh, Ben, you better come with me. I'm sorry to tell you, boys, Bert has diphtheria. The rest of you will have to have protective injections at once. We've had four other cases at the hospital. Oh, Ben, he'll need a nurse. Make arrangements. Yes, sir. There's no need of that. We'll look after him. Diphtheria is a dangerous disease, Miss Susie. Elijah Howe, do you think I've lived near doctors for 23 years without learning which diseases are dangerous? Uh, no, ma'am. All right, then. You, Heiser, and the boys can take care of him. I want one of you boys with him all the time. Bertie is very sick. It's begun to affect his heart. Oh, Miss Susie, I think you'd better notify his family. Bert has no family here. His parents are missionaries in China. There's no one? Oh, uh, there's a girl, Dr. Howe. Bert seems very fond of her, sir. A nurse at the hospital, Nan Summers. Better let her know, then. Now, listen carefully. I'll tell you exactly what I want done. Thanks for calling me, Mr. Prentice. He's sleeping now. We're doing everything we can, ma'am. I know. I'll go back to his room. No, no, it's 10 o'clock, Lige. I'll take over. Well, call me if you need me, Pop. Sure. He's awfully sick. Oh, this is the worst time. You'll be with him all night? Till four. He thinks a lot of you. Take good care of him. I will. I'll telephone as soon as I get off duty. Now, don't worry, Nan. He's going to be all right. Sure. Good night. That you, Pug? Thought you were asleep. My pulse is lower. Do you know what that means? Bert, you're not supposed to be talking. You saw that diphtheria heart in the lab. Nobody could live with a heart like that. You've got to be quiet. Remember what the book says, Pug? A very slow pulse with feeble heart sounds make a, a fatal termination certain. The book's right. Bug, <laughs> Bert, if you don't rest... Have you I'll... ever been afraid to, to die, Bug? It's, it's not that I'm afraid, but not now. Now when I've just begun to live. You're not going to die, Bert. Can't you help me? Can't you do something, Pug? Bert, Pug. Pug, where are you going? Don't, don't leave me, Pug. Don't leave me. That's you, Pug? Anything wrong? I said, is anything wrong? Lige, I, I... It's all right, Bert. Lige. Yeah? Where's Bug? Bug. Gonna, gonna die, Lige. Gonna die. Don't you leave me, Lige. Please. I, I've been looking for you. I ran out on him, Ben. I ran out on Bert. How is he? How is... You don't know? Know what? Bert died just before noon. Pug, you're wanted in the dean's office. So you told him? Nobody told him anything. He's called in all fourth-year students. There have been eight more cases of diphtheria right here in the hospital staff. You fellas have to help out in the outpatient department. A lot of help I'll be... If I were you, I'd get over there right away. That's all I have to say. Except those of you whom I've assigned to outside maternity duty may have to work without an intern. 
Well, you wanted to be doctors. Now get to work. Come on, let's Okay, get well, let's... What did you get, Pug? Obstetrics. Oh, you're lucky, Steve. Well, what's the matter? Don't you like it? Nothing's the matter. Well, that's what you want, isn't it? Is it? Will you be seeing Dr. Rice? Naturally. Well, tell him he'll have to forget about me. Tell him to get someone else. Pug! All right, then, don't. I'll tell him myself. But, Pug, darling, what's wrong? Oh, nothing's wrong. You shouldn't have called me up, Gret. I... I don't know why I said I'd come over. But I want so very much to help, to understand. Please tell me. I don't want to talk about it. Please, Gret, leave me alone. Do you only want me to be around when you're proud of yourself? To be glad with you when things are going fine? Is that what you think love is, Pug? Anybody could do that. I wanted to be your wife. Oh, I'm sorry, Gret. Goodbye. Pug! <laughs> I come in? Oh, if you want, Miss Susie. Packing? That's right. I'm leaving. The hospital just telephoned for you. I told Heiser to tell him I'm not going. But they call again. They need you. Don't you know a doctor can't accept or refuse calls according to the way he feels? I'm not a doctor. Whatever it takes, I haven't got. They ought to be glad I'm leaving. You're thinking of Bert. Certainly I'm thinking of Bert. No one could have helped him. Not even Dr. Howe. You know that. Yes, I know that. But the one he wanted the most wouldn't have run out and left him. I did. You couldn't have helped Bert. But you can help some poor woman who's waiting for a doctor. I'm not going. I'm afraid you'll have to. I told them you'd be there. You did what? I told them you were on your way. After tonight, you can leave if you want to. But not now. Well, supposing I can't help that woman, Miss Susie. Supposing it's the same as it was with Bert. But it won't be the same, and you will be able to help her. They've sent a nurse on ahead. Here's the address. Now get over there. But, Miss Susie, And I... you'd better hurry, St. George. That you, Pug? Come in. Nan. They, they said a nurse would be here. I didn't know it was you. I heard you'd left town. I came back. Bert wouldn't have wanted me to quit. Not at a time like this. Did you bring the clinical record? Yes. The woman's 34. This is the third child. No complications. The family's inside. If you're ready, I'll clear them all out. Uh, go ahead. I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Everything's all right, isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, sure, Mrs. Johnson. Everything's going to be fine. Nan, come here. Yes? You're sure those clinical records showed no complications? Why, no. Well, something's wrong somewhere. Child's heartbeat is very slow. Circulation's blocked. Well, I'm all ready if you have to intervene. No, it wouldn't help. Ain't nothing going to happen to the baby, Doctor. Doctor, tell me. Oh, well, please, Mrs. Johnson. We'll, we'll do everything we can. You'll help, won't you, Doctor? I'll phone the hospital for an intern. Uh, how do you know they got one to spare? Besides, there's not any time. It's a prolapse cord. Uh, operate? Do I have any choice? No. Get the father in here. Show him how to give ether. Yes, Doctor. And don't frighten him. Mrs. Johnson? Uh, now, don't worry, Mrs. Johnson. Everything's going to be all right. You're going to be fine. And so will your baby. You're sure there ain't nothing wrong with the baby? You're sure, Doctor? Oh, the baby's fine. So is your wife, in case you're interested. Oh, sure. Sure I am, Doctor. Why do they always worry about the baby first? I don't know, but they do. You stay with her, Mr. Johnson. She'll be waking up soon, and she'll want to see you. You're going to be a fine doctor. You're going to be a fine nurse. I'll need to be. I'm going away, Pug. Home? Well, in a funny kind of way, I'm going home. I'm going to China. China? I want to live where Bert and I would have lived, to do the things we planned to do. They've accepted me at a mission hospital. You, you're not afraid? No, Pug. I'm not afraid. That's right, ma'am. I'm not either. Not anymore. Well, here you are, Miss Susie. Our class picture. Best looking group of doctors you ever had, Miss Susie. Champs waiting, boys. Don't want to miss your train. I, I can't believe it. 
Your doctor is now. You're leaving me. Now, now, Miss Susie. It's all right, gentlemen. She's entitled to a good cry once a year. I just want to say I'd loved having you here. Each one of you. Thank you for never having disappointed me. Thank you for... for liking me. Come back and visit us as often as you can. Heiser and me and little Elise. Uh, Silas, give my love to your mother. I will, Miss Susie, and thank you for everything. Clayton... Good luck, Clayton. Thanks, Miss Susie. Be sure you write me as soon as you get to London, Irving. I, I will, Miss Susie. We'll wait for you in the cab, Pug. Now don't keep us waiting so long. St. George. Goodbye, Miss Susie. Oh, in case you see Margareta Howe, tell her that if she doesn't mind, I, I'd like to see her when I get back. I'll tell her. Oh, I'm glad you're going to be with Dr. Faber. I couldn't bear to lose all of you at once. <laughs> you won't lose me, Miss Susie. Anything I ever may amount to, you'll have part in. And that's true of every doctor that ever walked out of this house. Thank you. Gonna miss you, Mr. Pug. Goodbye, Heiser. Here I come, fellas. So long, Pug. Hey, hey, wait a minute. See you at the station. Hey, wait for me. Hey. Can I give you a lift, doctor? Grant. Um, I just thought I'd drive you to the station. Oh, Gret, you're the last person in the world I expected to see. We, we'd better hurry. And the one I wanted to see the most. I, I hope you're not going to miss that train. Oh, and I don't blame you if you haven't much use for me. We'd better get going. I wouldn't blame you at all. Oh, Paul, I... Gret, have I any chance at all? Why do you think I'm here, you big baboon? Now, hurry up and kiss me or we'll never get started. Glad to go, Miss Susie. Still think I did wrong phoning Miss Gret? <laughs> no, I guess you did all right. Guess you did fine. Who's that down the street, Heiser? Hmm? Looks like a new student. Well, take good care of him. Uh, excuse me, sir. Is this Miss Susie Slagle? It sure is. Why, well, uh, I'm looking for a place to live near the medical school. I'll take your bag, sir. Step right in. Mighty glad to have you with us, Doctor. Our stars will be back with their curtain calls in just a minute. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. We are grateful to Miss Susie Slago for bringing together tonight's delightful stars, Joan Caulfield, William Holden, and Billy DeWolf. <laughs> Incidentally, Billy, how do you like radio? It was very nice to appear in Susie Slager, sir. <laughs> oh, it's so embarrassing. I just paid seventeen fifty to have those fixed. <laughs> uh, how was that again, Billy? I said I wouldn't have missed participating in tonight's show. Well, well, I think we got the idea, but what happened to your voice all of a sudden? Well, last week I listened to Lauren Bacall blow her whistle on the air, so I thought I'd whistle back at her. Oh. <laughs> You're giving her a DeWolf call, huh? You know, you ought to get a job as an announcer, Billy. And instead of singing commercials, we could have whistling commercials. Do you think I'd be useful in selling soap? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you'd be whistling while you work. Good night. Good night. Good night, and many thanks for Susie's pleasure. <laughs> this is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood.
is the American Forces Radio and Television Service.